months in process seminar. So it's a pleasure to have Shurajit Dhara with us today. He is the first domestic speaker in this seminar series. Shurajit uh, works on liquid crystals. He did his PhD from Raman Research Institute. Then after a brief, a brief stint in Bits Pilani, he has been at the University of Hyderabad now for quite some time. And uh, Shurajit is also the recipient of the prestigious Shonayati Fellowship a couple of years back. So he will tell us about his work. Uh, I'm first, uh, uh, I apologize for my bad throat because of this <laughs> throat infection. <clears throat> okay, so um, let me thank Professor Pratap Rajodhuri and my other friends uh, for giving me this uh, opportunity and inviting me uh, to discuss and present some of, of my recent results. Uh, I am I, basically a short matter physicist and uh, mostly work on liquid crystals. And uh, this, uh, so the title today, uh, the title of my talk is uh, Self Assembly of Liquid Crystal Colloids via Elasticity and Topological Defects. As you know, these uh, topological defects, they are actually studied in uh, various uh, branches in physics, starting from cosmology to condensed matter, optics, and even in active matters. This uh, in fact, in uh, cosmology, uh, it is believed that uh, the after the Big Bang, when the universe, universe was cooling very rapidly, it was going through several symmetry-making phase transitions, and the cosmic things were created. So, which those are topological defects. And uh, today's this large-scale structure of this universe is believed to be due to this formation of these cosmic things. And they have different name in condensed matter, they are called uh, dislocations in solid crystals. In liquid crystal, they are called discrimination. They could be either a point defects or a long line defects. And in all the liquid crystal displays which we use in our daily life, they are free from any topological defects. You can imagine if you have a 27 inch or even bigger displays, liquid crystal display. The liquid crystal molecules are very uniformly aligned between two substrate, okay, big substrate. It depends upon the size of the displays. Not even single topological defect formation is allowed. But it is very difficult job because you can see this elastic, I will show you, the elastic, the liquid crystals are soft material. Little perturbation can cause a lot of defects and therefore it will create problem for electro-optic operation of the liquid crystal displays. Okay? And in fact, let me tell you that in the beginning when display came to the market, it was very expensive, the mainly because the majority of the displays was thrown out because of the formation of these defects. So, so these defects are actually unwanted in displays. But I will show you today that these defects are actually very useful, provided you know how to control them, how to manipulate them. And using those defects and the elasticity of the liquid crystal medium, we will try to show that you can actually make a two-dimensional colloidal crystals which are very stable with a strong binding energy. And since liquid crystal undergoes several phase transitions, these 2D colloidal crystals will also exhibit varieties of structural reorganizations. So, uh, the outline of the talk is that first I will give you a brief introduction about liquid crystals and then the when you put some foreign particles, for example, in this case, I'll show you two types of particles. One is the spherical particle, and another is this uh, kind of platelet type rectangular particles. When you put such foreign particles in uniform liquid crystal, what happens? Okay. Basically, we nucleate topological defects. Then, when you have a phase transition in liquid crystals, because liquid crystal exhibits varieties of phase transitions, then what happens actually to those defects? The good thing about that, these defects actually can be seen under a microscope. Okay? Therefore, you can actually follow what happens, how the defect structure changes across the phase transitions. 
And then, so two types, as I said, one is spherical, another is non-spherical particles. And in that case, uh, in the non-spherical case, I will show you that different types of defects are formed. And the interaction also is very different. And when you apply electric field, they show some kind of very interesting electrokinetic motions like spinning or kind of propelling motion. Okay? And if I have time, I will try to briefly touch upon that the liquid crystal a droplet okay, can be used as a micro resonator where if you couple light, you can see the resonance properties. And this resonance is so sensitive because the quality factor of the resonance is so high, even minute changes in the structural reorganization of the molecules inside the cavity can be detected huh, very easily. So the, maybe I stand here so that. So uh, the uh, liquid crystals are basically, so what are liquid crystals? Liquid crystals are basically orientationally ordered liquids. And, and they are made of mostly organic molecules. If the, you have only orientational order like this, that means the, I'm talking about a elongated molecules like this. And if the molecules on an average oriented in some directions, they are called director, right? The n, which is de, uh, denoted by uh, unit vector dimensionless n cap. Okay. So this then it is called nematic phase. You have only orientational order. The center of mass of the molecules are random. Okay. But this orientation is, of course, theta can vary. And this is called director. So I will be using this word director quite often. So director means the average orientational direction of the molecules. If you have only uh, orientational order, you can see the n and minus n are physically equivalent. This demands the order parameter for such system should be a second rank tensor, which is given by this S alpha beta. And S is basically the scalar order parameter, which is given by P2 cos theta, which is half 3 cos square theta average minus 1. Theta is basically the angle of the molecule with respect to the n. Okay? It could be uh, theta could vary from you know, this way, uh, in, the azimuthal, in this direction. And the, this, this part, since it's soft matter, you know, it takes the spatial variation of the director, that n. Now, if you, there are some kind of molecules uh, which shows this kind, uh, the several phase transitions. For example, if they have, apart from orientation order, if they tend to separate in a layer, they are called smectic liquid crystal. In this case, apart from the orientation order, yes, you have a positional order of the layers. And therefore, you can define a complex order parameter psi, which is given by this function. Okay? And it is also possible that these molecules, instead of being this layer normal parallel to this director, they can tilt. Okay? And you see, as you decrease the temperature, you can actually go much lower and lower you know, symmetry. And this is called smectic C. There are more than 40 such different phases of liquid crystals known. I'm just showing some of the simple uh, phase transitions. This is one of the liquid crystals which is used almost maybe 100, I mean, 100 percent, I mean, all the displays are used, uh, this kind of nematic liquid crystal, OK? <coughs> now, as I said, these liquid crystals are made of uh, organic molecules. Typical example of organic molecules are like <coughs> these rod-like molecules. So this is like a biphenyl ring. And you can see these molecules have a cylindrical symmetry. So therefore, in the nematic phase, they can have a free rotation along the long axis. And yeah, yeah. So in the, should one think of director as some sort of like easy axis within the system, or, uh, or is it? So, OK, so right. So the answer to the question, director is basically an average direction of orientation of the molecules. OK, as I said, they have a long, they have only orientation order, OK? And so director is basically a, if you have a, you can, you can imagine a clusters, in that you have average orientation is that one. But as you go in the bulk, then this direction can actually move around like this. Let's say I will show you, I will show you one, uh, you know, I will show you like this. Ah, no, I, I will show you here. So the, basically I am trying to say is that the director is basically, if you look at locally, microscopically, look at microscopically, in a, eh? then the molecules on an average, they are oriented in some directions. 
Okay, that is the director. But what breaks? I mean, uh, hmm. what breaks that direction is uh, some uh, something that is characteristic within the system or some external uh, stimulus? No, I didn't get your question. <laughs> See, okay, this how it comes when you, if you go to isotropic phase, then you get a totally disordered liquids, right? Where you have actually broken, destroyed this both positional and even orientation order. But when you cool, then the spontaneous, the you spontaneously break the isotropic symmetry of the isotropic phase. Yes. Huh. Yes. Yes, that's why I'm saying that if you microscopically, if you see, since a liquid crystal, you have a direction, but if I have a bulk, I will show you for example, say this is a liquid crystal, right? I have in a bottle. Can I define N? Answer is no. Because the N, if you look microscopically, is a kind of domain where on an average molecules are oriented, but as you go in the bulk, that, that direction can actually spontaneously keep on changing, right? Huh? No, this is not a polycrystal. It is actually the, I mean, if you look at microscopy, there's a few molecules around, okay? You see that on an average, they have an orient, average orientation. But since it's a liquid, the moment you go a little away, then this average orientation direction keeps on changing. Away from the surface? Yes, it is away from the surface. Yes. You can always, yes. This, this S has two parts, scalar order parameter S, and then you have a special, this Bracket part in the bracket takes care of the spatial variation of this n. Okay, so scalar part is s, which experimentally we can measure. Okay, right. So now, so uh, this you can actually have different types of uh, molecules. Usually, these anisotropic molecules they exhibit liquid crystalline phases, and these two are actually relatively new in the sense that this liquid crystal made of bent core molecules was discovered in 1996. One beauty of this is that, in fact, it changed the notion of uh, the macroscopic uh, you know, polar phases in liquid crystal is that this kind of bent cell molecule, they are achiral. You can see there is no chiral center in this. But they can pack in a layer in such a way you can break the mirror symmetry and you get C2 symmetry. Essentially, you can have a layer which is chiral and therefore you get a transverse polarization. I'm trying to say that this kind of acryl molecule can give rise to a macroscopic chiral phases like ferroelectric, antiferroelectric phases in liquid crystal. Okay. In fact, before that it was known that to have a ferroelectric or antiferroelectric phase, you must have a chiral molecules. But this is the first time it was discovered that not only you need to have a chiral molecule, but if the molecules, acryl molecules can pack and break and give the similar symmetry in the layer, layers can be chiral. Okay. And this, this layer, this packing in the layer easily happens because as you can see that such molecules cannot have free rotations along the long axis, okay? They cannot, so therefore they have easy tendency to make a layer structure. Yeah. Yes, but now, so you, no, molecules has no chirality. You can see there is no, hmm. no, uh, that's what I'm saying. Now suppose if you have this kind of bent core molecules and if they pack in a layer, you have a layered structure of this molecule, but in the layer is a tilt, you get a mirror plane where you get a zero symmetry along the transverse direction. Yeah, but it's exactly same the same on the opposite Yes. But, but if you see the, if you look at the one layer, you have a, you have, you have a transverse polarization, but that polarization can keep on changing as you go in the z direction. Okay. Now, this is another kind of liquid crystals where they are made of disk-like molecules. And in this case, this, uh, the disks, they can actually stack easily uh, on each other. And uh, therefore, they can form different types of phases. One of the simplest one is that kind of, you know, columnar phases of these disk-like molecules. Okay. And uh, in fact, since they have a pi stacking, it is believed that this could be a good conductor and the electrons can, the charge can easily flow along the uh, column axis than the other directions. Now, if you uh, keep a liquid crystal in a bottle, you see kind of a white turbid color. And this color actually comes from the scattering of the light. In fact, if I remember, the first theory was given by Degens, But before that, at least 20 years, it was not understood 
why you get a color from this white color from liquid crystal <coughs> okay so uh, now if you take a uh, liquid crystal a thin film of liquid crystal between two substrate you often come across a very colorful textures okay this kind of texture so the color actually represent that local variation of the molecular orientation the director okay therefore you have a optical literation heading across the sample but more importantly that you see some points there are four black lines are actually meeting those points are actually the defect points either you can have four points meeting or two points meeting if four point four lines are meeting on one point that is a call a uh, defect of defect having stain one or plus or minus one and if two two points are meeting then it could be and then then it is actually a plus half or minus half so how basically this is basically a kind of winding number so that can be easily understood that if you take for example for a uh, this half defect okay where you have defect stain the half if you look at this this is a defect point where your order is zero now if you take a distance r from this defect and go around if i rotate by angle phi and if this director rotates by theta then theta is equal to m phi plus constant and if i make a that means around this point if i make a 2 pi rotation if my director also rotate 2 pi then i said that i have a one defect and if i rotate 2 pi but for example in this case you see i go 2 pi but this director being apolar it only goes pi therefore it's half defect and in the microscope this is a polarizing optical microscope you will see two lines but this could be this or that but we know how to distinguish this kind uh, the sign of the defects i'll not go into detail but what i'm trying to make a point here is that a thin film of liquid crystal will uh, show you this kind of topological defects with uh, mostly plus half minus half or plus one minus one and this defect lines actually a line the half defects 